One of the best performing videos on this channel was the 6 best ships for beginners, created almost 2 years ago. I think it's already time to introduce another set of ships that beginners can use. Of course, the mentioned ships from my other video are still good for beginners, except for one that is now considered a troll pick. I just think that the current list can be lacking or insufficient, given how many fleets we can build. Especially with the restricting requirement in hard stages. Plus, we now have stage 14, which is a destroyer map. And I don't have any recommendations for that in the first video. But before we proceed, just a quick note from our sponsor. Hello, and welcome. This is Neldrin, and today, I am excited to be working with Anime Dakimakura Pillow, the largest anime pillow collection, which is the sponsor of this video. Anime Dakimakura Pillow offers various designs ranging from One Piece, Baruto's Dad, and Bleach. They even have collections for Genshin Impact and you guessed it right, as Elaine. And with a variety more anime titles and anime themed games. Of course, they cater to all your taste in anime. From wholesome, to cultured, and just what the shit is wrong with you. Just like the old saying says. Gems are red, oceans are blue. No matter what you do, there's a Dakimakura suited for you. The one that I ordered is one of my favorite ships in Azalane, which is formidable. I chose the peach skin for the cloth. The texture is not just smooth and soft, but it also feels incredible to the skin as you caress it. Providing a luxurious and indulgent experience that will transport you into a world of pure comfort and relaxation. The character design is on point, and it is noticeable how detailed the print on the cloth is. The print is back-to-back -back and has a different pose for each side. You also don't need to worry about awkward zipper position just like my dog pillow here, as Anime Dakimakura pillow has a hidden zipper at the bottom side. It's not just hidden, but also small enough not to spoil the aesthetic design of the body pillow. Anime Dakimakura Pillow is trusted by more than 200 YouTubers around the globe, including me. It supports the anime community by helping individuals and studios by promoting and sharing the proceeds of their artwork. So what are you waiting for? Order now and get your own Dakimakura Pillow. And here's something for you because you are one of my awesome viewers. If you use my promo code ADP-Admiral, you will get a 10% discount. Yes, that's ADP-Admiral. Thank you Anime Dakimakura Pillow for sponsoring this video. Now on to our guide. As a refresher, the ships I'll be picking should pass the following criteria. First, it should have a guaranteed way to obtain it be it buying in the shop or a reward for something. If the ship is dropped only on a specific map, then it will not be considered. This means ships like Yudachi and the Fox Sisters won't be on this list. Second, it should perform well at later stages. Without this condition, then it will just be a typical beginner ship list where I will recommend all good startup ships. And we already have a lot of it from other YouTubers, there's no need to repeat what is already mentioned several times. And third, it should not be event limited. This is to complement the first rule. It's pointless to recommend a ship if you missed the event. Lastly, take this guide as subjective as possible. Some of them are obtainable after a few weeks or months, depending on how you actively farm your resources or complete the task. They are replaceable if you will get stronger ships from the locked events. Even so, the following ships are still usable even at later stages. Before we go to the list, I want to address the elephant in the room. Despite passing all the requirements laid out, Portland didn't make it to the list. I was supposed to add her, but as I review my list, I realize that she's the only ship that cannot compete with any of the PR ships. 
Yes, even with Rune or Ibuki, who is the weakest link among the PR ships of the same hull type. Is she worth it? Yes, definitely. She's one of the strongest heavy cruisers who was neither a PR ship nor came from an event. However, she is easily replaceable compared to the ships that I'll be mentioning in this list. She will just be under the honorable mention. Another ship that is missing was Enterprise. I'll be honest. I just forgot to include her on my first list. Because I'm so hyped with Independence's retrofit at that time. Since I'll be removing the cat because I think she's the least useful compared to the other ships. Enterprise will be replacing her. Enterprise is one of the ships that hold the test of time. With her strong aviation stat paired with the chance of double damage she deals with, she's a formidable force to reckon with. There's nothing much to talk about her because of her simplistic yet effective playstyle. You just need to understand which plane to equip in different situations to maximize her full potential. And with the introduction of Yorktown 2, her power is stronger than ever, as she will get damage buff and interceptive airstrikes. Now that I'm done addressing the ships that are missing from the previous list, let's get into the additional set of ships for beginners to obtain. The first two ships I will recommend are two ships I wish were part of the first list. However, because of the limitations in their acquisition at that time, they didn't make it. Now that the shackles are unchained, these two are worth the investment. Rune News used to be an event-only ship. Now that her event is archived, she has become available in the core shop for a monthly refresh. She shares the same number of guns and efficiency as her PR version. But she has slightly better HP stats and better skills without the hassle of collecting blueprints or spending a lot of coins on her development. You will be spending on her limit break, but that's way cheaper than upgrading her research version's development level. Her red skill, Encore Flare, is a special barrage. If there are multiple enemies, then they will take more damage for the next 6 seconds. If only one enemy is hit, then it will be slowed. Her other red skill, Bilateral Accompaniment, will deploy a shield that can block an enemy and the other set will deal damage. Rune Muse is one of my favorite ships especially when I want to bring battleships equipped with twin barrels, or anyone with the 15 second timer in their skill. Paired with Helena Meta, while equipping an Eagle Union gear, the slow and increased damage buff are strong utilities that will complement the quick barraging battleships. Plus, Helena Meta's blue skill will make Rune Muse even more tankier. And if you are a carrier lover, then Sirius is my other recommended ship on this list. Before, she was only obtainable via light construction. With the recent updates, she can now be obtained via the metal shop. As a Dido class ship, she can wield a DD gun which improves her DPS. Her yellow skill, Mark of Sirius, is a supporting skill for carriers, which increases their aviation stat. This will also improve her offensive stat depending on the number of carriers you are bringing with her. Her red skill is just an increase in her firepower. Sirius is one of the ships you want to use in stages 12 and 13. She's a light cruiser, which means she has excellent anti-air stat. On the said stages, you will absolutely bring triple carriers which complements her yellow skill that will buff both the carriers and Sirius. Unlike the previous video, this time I'll be recommending some battleships. Currently, we rarely have new events and most of the events are getting archived, which makes obtaining some of the premium ships harder to obtain as the pool has an increasing amount of ships. Hood is another great ship to invest in now that she got her own augment module. She can be acquired in your beginner missions and metal shop. 
Her red skill Royal Navy's Glory is a barraging skill with 70% activation when her main gun is fired. This will also improve the reload of your main fleet. With her signature augment module, the barrage will be guaranteed every time your main gun is fired. This is a huge improvement given that Monarch, who used to be her upgraded version, has only 70% activation. Still, they have distinct differences, as Hood is better for light-armored enemies while Monarch is for heavy-armored. But the gap in their power level closes. Hood with Howe will be a strong force when clearing the main campaign, as they will improve each other's reload. You can delay the development of Monarch and focus on other ships if you wanted or until you have a sustainable economy to buy the dev level using coins. The other battleship I'll be recommending is someone who got her retrofit recently. Nelson is a battleship that will be rewarded to you once you complete a set of newbie missions, similar to Portland and Hood. But you will get her earlier than Hood. Nelson will likely be your first mobbing ship in the game. As her red skill, Big 7, will have a 40% chance to fire a special barrage every time she fires her main gun. This barrage is widely spread, which is an excellent mobbing skill. On her retrofit, it will increase to 70% activation and the barrage pattern will change depending on the number of enemies. For two or fewer, it is a more concentrated barrage, while dealing with three or more enemies will be her usual spread barrage. Her retrofit skill, close engagement, will increase her firepower and accuracy. At three stacks, it will also complement her barrage, making it guaranteed to fire, due to the extra 30% activation rate. It is highly advisable to equip Pennant of Victory, which is obtainable when limit-breaking Nelson and Rodney. This auxiliary equipment will help to jumpstart her retrofit skill at the start of the battle. Nelson is weak at the start of your playthrough, given how horrible her barrage activation rate is. But once you completed her upgrades, she will step on everyone who will try to oppose her. And her power level will almost be on par with Hood. Given that she's an elite rarity, she is cheaper to upgrade and more manageable in your expenses in terms of oil and coins. Okay, we now have ships that can cover chapters 9 to 11, and 12, and 13. How about chapter 14? In this map, the destroyers perform very well. So the next ships are of this type. First, for the destroyer class, I'll be recommending Kawakaze. She's a torpedo specialist ship that is obtainable via the merit shop. Her first yellow skill, Lunga Point Strike, will increase the damage of all IJN destroyers to enemy cruisers. With her augment module, she will fire a special barrage. Her other yellow skill, Impartial Destruction, will adjust her torpedo damage because it will ignore the enemy's armor type. This is a buff against light armor, but a nerf to medium and heavy armor. This will also increase the torpedo damage modifier. Kawakaze is a destroyer ship that can spam her slashes, similar to Shimakaze and Wakasuki. I just find it a bit funny because her augment module somehow looks similar to the Bankai of Ichigo Kurosaki, and the special barrage is slash attacks, which also resembles Ichigo's iconic move. You want to equip the 76mm gun so that her slash attack and all-out assault will activate frequently, which most of her damage will be coming from. Especially the all-out assault as it also fires torpedoes. The second destroyer I'll be recommending will be Chang Chun. She is obtainable via Guild Shop. She's a destroyer and will be upgraded into a guided missile destroyer, where she can equip a missile instead of torpedoes. Missiles are technically the strongest if they will be compared to the torpedoes. Even though it is possible to position her in the back line, 
it is better to use her as a vanguard. Her yellow skill, Mutual Assistance, will improve the offensive stats of the vanguard if they belong to the Dragon Empery or Northern Parliament. Once upgraded to her retrofit, it will also buff the main fleet. Her retrofit skill, White Tiger's Prance, will provide her with a missile strike charge that is usable while navigating your fleet around the map. This will also let her fire a special barrage every 15 seconds. Similar to Kawakaze, she also has a spammable barrage, but in terms of her all-out assault, which is further improved by auxiliary equipment. She will also have an additional gun slot on her retrofit. This together with her barrage skills and missiles will surely wipe her enemies more efficiently than a normal destroyer. Here's a quick summary of the ships recommended from my first list and what I discussed earlier. And that's all of them. If you think I missed something, then let me know in the comment section. I hope that this recommendations will help you in progressing to your journey in this game. And don't forget to subscribe and share this video to support my channel. You guys are awesome, and see you next time.